instructions on the floor of your casing uh, will let you know where to place the screw razors depending on uh, the size of your motherboard. In our case we have an ATX motherboard, meaning that we are going to place the screw razors on the holes which show a number one next to it. I marked them in red on your screens and for the two blue dots that you can see in the middle those show the screw razors which were pre-assembled by the casing manufacturer. Screw razors are not the easiest component to screw in your case, so make sure to have a pair of pliers laying around just in case you may need them. And once done, simply align the motherboard peripherals with the IO shield that we had installed in the previous step. The two screw razors which came pre-installed by the case manufacturer have thicker edges on their roof and this will allow the motherboard to rest in place so that we can secure it to the case floor. But before we go any further, I'd like to take a closer look to our X99 motherboard. The X99 series is a little bit more complex and come with more features than your average Z170 chip motherboard series. The most obvious difference is that the X99 series can support up to 128GB of DDR4 RAM memory, that's double the capacity of a Z170 series motherboard. Another difference? its CPU socket. The V11 V3 CPU socket has a bigger pin surface, and that means we can deliver more power to our CPU. Simply said, we can operate more physical core on our processor and still keep all the flexibility we would need to safely overclock it. So yeah, double the RAM memory and a more powerful processor. What else do we have? The PCI slots. This particular motherboard can support up to 5 16-speed PCI Express. And lost in the middle of all that bandwidth, we have a single-speed PCI Express. And yeah, we are not going to use this one. For optimal performances, we will place our video card on the very first PCI Express. But if we were to operate two video cards, say in an SLI configuration, then we would use the first and the third PCI Express available on the motherboard. And if we were to operate three video cards in an SLI configuration, then we would go for the first, third and fifth PCI Express available on this motherboard. Next, our M.2 connector. And this is a 4-speed M.2 connector, meaning that we will be able to take full advantage of our insane 950 Pro VNAND bandwidth. And worth noting, this motherboard requires us to install it in a vertical configuration, and we will take a look at this on the next video. This is where I'm really, really, really happy with this motherboard. Actually, I'm really, 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 really happy with any motherboards that will give me both a thermal display and a power and reset button soldered onto the motherboard. It just makes my overclocking so much easier, and I really appreciate this. Alright, back to business. The last thing we are going to do in this video is to secure the motherboard onto the case. To do so, we are going to use 9 screws, and make sure not to tighten them too much. Finger tight is quite enough. 